Okay, welcome back to Small Press Expo 2012. Uh, we are here doing this interview thing. This is. I'm still Joe. Um, I guess I'm still. Yeah, I'm still rusty. Mostly, pretty much. And this is. Uh, Justin. Now, so, Justin, you make a comic? I did. It's exciting. So, oh my God, tell <laughs> me about it. <laughs> uh, I brought one with me. Actually. Whoa, there it is. It's yeah, real. It's, it's here. You can hold it. Um, it's called The Wonder City. And it's the first in a volume of actually six books that is going to take place over the entire history of New York City. Whoa. Yeah. So uh, it's pretty rad. And that sounds like a lot of studying. It was a lot. It took me two years to research this wow. book. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a nerd. <laughs> so, so it was just second nature to you. Yeah, it was completely second nature to me. Yeah, and nerdiness will pay off for the reader. Well, yeah, so. we hope so. Authenticity. Yeah. So awesome. tell us about this first volume, which I see is titled "The Great Great Whale of Coney Island." Yeah. So basically, this first book starts off in 1942 on Coney Island. Um, the subsequent issues will jump all around throughout time, but um, it kicks off. It's basically uh, a mystery that starts at the founding of New York. And then we jump to 1942, and uh, our main character is sort of a Gal Friday gumshoe by the name of Velma Graydon. And she is trying to solve the mystery of a charm, which has the fate of New York City locked inside of it. So it's an adventure mystery, historically based on things that actually happened in New York history, but sort of loosely based. There's some license in it. So, okay. yeah. Keeps it exciting that way. Oh, it always does, yeah. <laughs> Especially when it's history, when people are like, uh, history. I'm like, no, 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 but it's not all real. <laughs> it's good history. It's good history. <laughs> it's not boring history, it's the I fun promise. History. So. The fun history, fake. Yeah. 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 So, so um, is this your first SPX or have you been here? It is yeah. not. It is my second. As I've been telling everybody, I'm a sophomore. Um, and the show has been, last year was magical. It was great. We had a really great show this year, continuing to meet really nice people, people that we saw last year, uh, making new friends. It's been really awesome. Very so, cool. Yeah, it's uh, so have you had a pretty good reaction? Yeah, no, we had a great reaction. We had one of the coolest things for us has been people from last year who bought the book came back to me this year and said, "Oh my God, I remember you know, I bought the book last year, loved it. Following your stuff online, you know, we're posting pages from book two on our website, and uh, you know, totally devoted followers. So that's yeah. been great. And then newbies too, people who." are just interested in the story. I just had a librarian from Columbia University say, I need to put your book in my library. So wow. we're going to put it in Columbia's library and then I'll give you a tour. I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> so, That's oh, a yeah. nice turn of events. Yeah, I, I'm coming down to Bethesda to meet people from New York who are interested in New York. <laughs> so I think it's great. You guys had to get away in order to meet. We really? had to get away. It's always, it's always the way it is. Got to get away. It's well worth the trip, too. Now, have you uh, purchased anything that got you really excited? Uh, no, actually, I haven't done my walk around yet. I, since uh, Courtney Zell, who's the illustrator, she's my partner and she's manning the table now. She got to do her walk around. She got this really cool "I Want to Be F. Scott Fitzgerald" T-shirt, which she's totally in love awesome. with. Um, and she's there's a couple of prints that she was interested in. I am eyeing up a couple of books. Uh, I think I might do uh, take the plunge and get some of the more expensive uh, books I've seen running around just because I've been waiting uh, well, for the Chris Ware. You don't know, you know when you're going to yes. see these books again. Right, right. Yeah. And if it's a Chris Ware book and he's here. And he's here. Yeah. I actually, I, he, he probably thinks I'm absolutely insane, but I was walking to the bathroom and he was coming down and I just stopped him and I was like, listen, you're a game changer for me. <laughs> just wanted to let you know, thank you so much for everything you do. And he was like, so tall and he's like yeah thank you I was like, okay. he talked to security about that by the way it he was did. Oh, yeah. am i am i on like a list now? we got no. a notice so. no in a good way oh okay yeah. he <laughs> talked about it in a good way he's like yeah. let this kid in next hey, this, man do yeah, exactly. <laughs> he this guy can do whatever he wants Free pass. so yeah no it's definitely cool to be able to buy a chris ware book or a daniel Klaus book and be like here with them so yeah i'll probably do that <laughs> Um, so you're planning this as a series. Do you have like a, a schedule planned out ahead of how you're going to work? They're out all mapped out. The volumes? six books are mapped out. Um, we're basically res keeping ourselves responsible for a page a week. Online. Okay. Um, so at the rate at which that goes, I think the second book will be done within a year. Uh, and then we're just going to keep trucking along. Um, yeah. We're doing interstitial stuff too on the website. There's uh, a noir fiction story that goes on between the first book and the second book. It's prose, but Courtney's illustrating cover shots for that. So we're trying cool. to keep everybody interested. Now, how far ahead do you know what you want the story to be? Um, 
I think basically I dreamed up the story about five years ago. I mapped out the entire arc from start to finish. And each book then started taking on a life of its own as I mapped it out. So I'd say I'm about a book or two ahead of myself each time. It's it's much easier to script than to illustrate. So yeah. Courtney's got the big job by actually drawing <laughs> the pictures. I'm just like, like okay, here. You don't even yeah. send her words sometimes. Yeah, sometimes yeah. it's like just building. But she's actually making me hand letter to keep me involved physically in the process <laughs> of doing the book. So it keeps the dialogue down. <laughs> yeah. It's like checks and balances. Yeah, definitely. And then there's just a caption, long speech here. Yeah, just yeah. I started actually resorting to being like typewriter font might be nice here. <laughs> so I don't have to I'm not good with a ruler. But. Now, where can someone go online to maybe look or to purchase your book? You can go online, www.thewondercity.com. And it's all right there. It's right there for you to purchase the book, follow along with the stories. You can see everything. Everything's out there. Wow. We also have a Tumblr, too. We just started uh, thewondercity.tumblr.com, like this week in, in honor of SPX. So if you're on Tumblr, follow us, Twitter. We're at The Wonder City. So... We're all up in there. I feel awesome. like SPX inspires people to tumble. It does. Yes. You know why? Because SPX Tumblr is so awesome. It SPX, is awesome. It's really awesome. And I'm it like, is. I need a Tumblr too. I know the guys <laughs> that, that man it, and they do a great job. There, I miss there's the been Tumblr strong meetup. tumbling. I'm really, really? kind of ticked off I missed the yeah. Tumblr. Meetup. Yeah, they were talking about you. Yeah, were they? Were they yeah. like, where's that damn word? Yeah, Chris yeah. Ware told us about this guy. Yeah, yeah got our hopes up. Now, now yeah. we have a mystery bag of mystery questions. Okay, awesome. Now, oh, it, these questions great. are mysteries. Okay. Uh, would you like to take part? Yes, I do. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Oh, 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 like a oh, so open. oh, yes. And that's the question for you. This reminds me of a little bit, being a kid at those little <laughs> vending machines. Yes. Is there anyone you would take a bullet for? This includes jumping in front of a gun and also stealing from an ammunition shop. Sure, any, in any way. Yeah, so it doesn't have to be violent, but... Could be theft. It's probably it's more inspiring if it is. <laughs> There's probably more. Anybody I would take a bullet for? I feel like I would take a bullet for... I would take a bullet for Chris Ware. I would. I'll be damned. Game changer. I'm going to say it. He was so gracious with my craziness yesterday. Right. If somebody wanted to shoot him, I'd be like, I can't let this happen. That he, is a He was going to make it out of that bathroom alive no matter no what. No matter, matter what. Even if he thought I was the one who was going to yes. shoot him. You'd no shoot Chris yourself Ware. before you <laughs> shot him. <laughs> I won't let this happen. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming to thank talk to us. Thank you very much yes. for having me over here. This is great. Have awesome. a great SPX. Thank you. You too. And, uh, and, I don't know, do some stuff. I will. Yeah. Totally. Be I've, awesome. I've got like four hours left to do some stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's good times. Thank you so All much. Right, thanks.